Well, hello there. Good to see you again, and welcome back to the OKR Cohort video and podcast series. I am your host and moderator, Ryan Ruff, and as always, I'll be joined on the show by Ms. Denise Canfield, Mr. Nazar Koja, the co-founders of OKR Cohort, and today is a very special episode. It's the final episode of our season one here on the series where we've been addressing these different challenges that organizations face, You know, whether it be the employees, the leaders, or even the customers themselves with these organizations, but today we have a really interesting challenge that we're going to be addressing that is a challenge that goes often unnoticed by organizations. And that can be a problem because if your competitor recognizes this opportunity, well, that's an issue for you. So we're going to be identifying what this challenge is even in the first place and why some organizations might not even be aware of it and how, of course, you can leverage OKRs to take action towards addressing this. But first, let's go ahead and say hi to the gang, Denise and Nazar. Nazar, it's good to see you this morning. Denise, how are you doing? Good morning, uh, Ryan. Good to see you too. Morning, Ryan. We are doing great. Excited for this last video and to to be going through this topic. I think it's really important today. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big one to to cap off season one here on the series. Uh, let's start from that high level. Nazar, talk to me. What is this challenge that you guys are seeing and kind of what I alluded to just a moment ago? Absolutely, Ryan. Organization don't know how to disrupt the status quo, like you mentioned, right? And rally their organization to the creation of game-changing, impactful, and market-creating delivery. Many organizations are indeed stuck in their old ways and unsure how to embrace new methods and drive the kind of innovation that leads to market disruption. And the key to addressing this challenge is to adopting mindset of continuous improvement and set ambitious objective that inspire teams to think outside the box. No, absolutely. It's so important. I mean, uh, addressing that status quo can be big and can take your organization to the next level. But again, this is even a challenge for those organizations that may already be successful, right? And they're enjoying a certain level of success. But again, as I mentioned earlier, if a competitor beats you to that game changing innovation, well, that can you know, create its own set of problems for you and your organization. But let's get a little deeper here. Talk to me about the why now. Why would you say this is even a problem in the first place? So Ryan, there are several factors at play here. For larger organizations, they often get caught up in the in eating their own dog food, meaning that they become too focused on pleasing stakeholders, maximizing profits, and sticking to the what has worked in the past. This can still innovation and prevent them from exploring new opportunities. We have seen examples of once thriving companies like General Electric, BlackBerry, and Notel struggling to adopt and stay relevant in the face of change. Denise, would you like to elaborate more of, of your observation on other organizations? Absolutely, Nazar. I think that that ability to adapt is really important for big companies. And the thing that helps them adapt is their people, right? Which is another reason it's such a big challenge for organizations. If those organizations aren't focused on helping their employees adapt their skill sets, helping their employees to develop, um, then they're not investing in their people's skills. And that can impact the creativity and innovation of the organization. And it means that they're not getting people with that learning mindset. They also don't attract top talent. Right, people who can come into the organization, bring f fresh perspectives and new ideas to that organization. So they just kind of get stuck in that rut. And even if that rut is a certain level of success, it can still be a rut for an organization as a whole. But tell me, guys, I want to I want to get even deeper into the weeds now. What's the ripple effect of not addressing this challenge in the first place? And what do you see it? Uh, what do you see the impact of this ripple effect having on the organization overall? Well, Ryan, one of the most significant consequences is the risk of being overtaken by startups and more agile competitors. These nimble organizations often have a different perspective on the market and can rapidly capture market share, leading to a decline in revenue for the established players. We have seen this happen with the downfall of big names like BlackBerry, who were displaced by more innovative companies like Apple or Google. For sure, Nazar. You know, I mean, 
we've seen those organizations leapfrogged, as you mentioned. And a, another consequence of that is that loss of top talent, right? People want to go where the energy is and where companies are being successful. And if you're not at the forefront, if your organization is not at the forefront of innovation, the most skilled and creative individuals are drawn to work for those other companies that offer more exciting and challenging opportunities. On top of that, when, when an organization fails to innovate and adapt, it can lose the trust of its stakeholders and customers. And, and now you're losing people, you're losing stakeholders, you're losing customers, right? And you get in that rut where you are declining because you don't have the investment needed, you don't have the interest from customers. And in the long run, you have that serious repercussion of financial stability and overall reputation that could literally put you out of business, as Nazar alluded to. Yeah, it's a slippery slope, not addressing this challenge, folks. But I want to flip the script now. Let's look at that glass half full mentality, if you will. Uh, Nazar, tell me, how could life just look so much better for an organization if they did address this problem, right? If they did try and break those barriers, move beyond the status quo, and truly provide that that game-changing impact in their market? Well, if an organization can promote a culture of creativity and innovation, they will be in a strong position to disrupt their market place and create truly game-changing products and services. This not only drives growth, but also sets them apart from their competitors. When a company is known for its innovation and forward-thinking approach, talent in, talented individuals from around the world will be eager to join the team. And this influx of fresh perspective can further fuel the organization growth and success. For sure. Uh, you know, I think, Nazar, what's, what's interesting is you're getting the right people, you're building the right things. And when an organization demonstrates that ability to innovate and disrupt the market, you're attracting investors, right, from various sectors, from venture capital firms to other organizations who might be looking to make acquisitions. And that influx of investment provides the resources needed to continue to evolve, innovate, and develop groundbreaking products and services. It also enables an organization to go public, right? When you have those things that get gets your market excited and gets people looking at you, if you're a privately held company that's that's relying on venture capitalists, really getting the right thing and disrupting the market enables you to go public and really um, fund the future of your organization. So embracing innovation and breaking away from the status quo really leads to a brighter future for your organization, your, your people, your employees, and the customers that you serve. Yeah, we mentioned the negative ripple effect of not addressing the challenge. Well, boy, is there a positive ripple effect if you can solve that and make that game-changing effort. But guys, I want to zoom out here for just a second from the challenge at hand because I think it's important for our audience to know, uh, especially for any of those who haven't caught a prior episode on this series, uh, to learn a little bit about you guys and how you work with organizations through OKR Cohort to address big challenges like these. Denise, why don't you take this one and, and talk to me and educate our audience a little bit bit about yourselves. Uh, leaders hire us to shift the focus of their organization from activities to outcomes, to, ad to identify where they are really stuck in a rut and missing the opportunity because they are lacking innovation and creativity um, and not embedding purpose in the work of their employees. In essence, we help them focus on the right things, get transparency across that work, and become market leaders in their specific industries, which ultimately is, is all tied to their strategy. So Nazar, maybe share a little bit about what OKRs are and, and how they help in this situation. Absolutely, Denise. OKR stands for Objective and Key Result. It is an outcome-focused goal-setting framework that helps organizations to align and connect strategic intent to work with aspiring goals. So, so zooming back in at the problem then today, this idea of organizations not really knowing how to break through that status quo and create those game-changing opportunities for their customers, uh, talk to us about how our, uh, OKRs can be leveraged here specifically. You know, what would be your piece of value to our audience, to those folks and organizations out there that are, are recognizing the need to address this challenge, but they're just unsure of where to begin? Ryan, by setting a 
ambitious and inspiring OKRs, organizations can refocus their priorities and encourage teams to think creatively. For example, a top level objective could be revolutionize the industry through disruptive innovation. The key results should then be designed to measure progress towards this goal while allowing room for experimentation and learning. So we all start, I would always say that we start with the impactful conversation to understand impact and needs and start with the conversation about the impact you want to make and the needs of your customer or stakeholder. This will help you focus on what really matters and avoid getting lost in details. Next would be identify problems that don't yet exist. Look for problems that haven't been clearly defined and solved yet. So this will help you stay ahead of a competition and innovate in a new ways. Focus on the root cause, not the symptoms. So be more proactive on under understanding the root cause of it. When you identify a problem and focus on the root cause rather than the symptoms, this will help you solve the problem more effectively and avoid wasting time on ineffective solutions. Next one would be leverage framework differently. Do not to focus too much on this framework specific. Focus on what problem you try to solve and how we work together to solve this problem. So using framework in new and different way of bringing the, your team behind on a high impact and disrupting concept. This can help you unlock new possibilities and drive innovation in your organization. One other component is very key to is a focus on right things sooner. Prioritize the right innovation that will drive value to your customers sooner. This will help you stay focused on what matters most and avoid wasting time on less important projects. Furthermore, to succeed in the today's market, organizations need to be flexible and focus on delivering products that meet customer needs and align with overall business goals. Outcome-focused product and service management goes beyond just offering features and capabilities. It's about achieving specific results that cater to customer demands and business objectives. So there are several steps that we recommend to take to identify what are the right outcome-focused product should look like. Step one is the first step is to identify the problem from the customer or user perspective by understanding their pain points and the impact uh, on their daily lives or work. Product management can find opportunities for improvement and develop solutions that provide real value. The next step is to recognize the reward or benefit that the customer or user will experience once the problem is solved by Understanding the desired outcomes like increased efficiency or cost saving, product management can develop solutions that deliver tangible benefits. The third step, usually we talked about the OKR framework helps product management focus on specific outcome and key results need to be solved the problem and deliver the customer desired reward. By adopting OKRs, product management can prioritize the most important results and align them with overall business objectives. The step four would be the team should develop a proposal that focuses on achieving the, the targeted objective with clear and specific OKRs that align with the customer needs and business goals. This ensures that all stakeholders are working towards the same goal. The next step, which is a step five, is to create a plan Outlining, outlining a major milestones and deadline needed to achieve the objective or OKRs. This includes identifying essential stakeholder, team members, and resources. A clear plan ensure everyone is working together and towards the same goal. It's about it's all about connectedness as well. Like we talked about in our in our past uh, uh, podcast about how people can connect and align, and that could be the step five. What it looks like. Step six is the last step. It always talks about team is responsible for delivering execution. It's execution step and monitoring progress towards outcomes and OKRs. How are we achieving towards certain outcomes and goals that will 
will be by doing some work or ex execution of any any specific activities. This involves tracking and reporting a key metrics and KPIs, as well as incorporating customer feedback constantly in the execution plan. By closing monitoring progress, product management can identify and address any barriers or issues that arise. All in all, outcome-focused products or services, service management is powerful approach that helps organization develop valuable products by focusing on customer needs, connecting outcomes to broader business objectives, and using OKR framework to define specific outcomes and key results. By following these steps, product management can ensure all stakeholders are aligned, like I mentioned earlier, connectedness, and working towards common goal, ultimately driving a success for both customers and the business. Oh, Nazar, no, this is great. A lot to unpack in there. I mean, that outcome-focused fo uh, product or service management is really a, a great approach and leveraging OKRs along the way. I, I can see the value there. Uh, but look, you know, you went through six steps there, and there's a lot to unpack within each step, especially for an organization that's looking internally at themselves and how they would take the steps to actually implement. So my next question to you guys would be, okay, we just gave, we left a lot of value on the plate there for our audience, but how can they take that knowledge and begin implementing it into their organization today? Well, you know, Ryan, it, it's a good question, right? I mean, we're teaching a lesson and, and some people could just pick that up and run with it. But what we notice is it's complicated and it, it isn't easy to just turn things around. So if you want to help make sure that your organization is staying current or even leapfrogging the needs of your marketplace by building an outcome focused approach to building products and services, we would start with a conversation, right? A conversation where you can share with us the, the challenges that you're facing, what you're experiencing, what you notice, and, and we can talk about how we can support shifting your focus to building the right things that help you uh, leapfrog the market, but also putting the right processes and rituals and frameworks in place in a way that they serve you. So just click the link below and let's start with a conversation. Fantastic. And yeah, folks, we had that link below uh, to grab some time on their calendars. But look, uh, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about just some examples, right? I know you guys work with organizations to address these challenges regularly. So do you have an example, Nazar, I'll throw it back over to you. Do you have any examples of of an organization that you guys have worked with that has maybe experienced this and went through this idea of leveraging OKRs to, you know, break through that status quo and, and be a true game changer? Definitely, uh, Ryan. One of the organizations we worked with, it was a 150-year-old financial institution. The goal for one of the key uh consumer or client or customer that they were supporting was a small business. The goal for their uh, the for the outcome they try to achieve is to increase the cust client a customer acquisition, but not only the customer acquisition perspective, but also keeping uh, like having a retention as well. In order to do that, they their go their their out the OKRs were keeping the clients connected to the organization that uh, who they are supporting, and the key results are number of customers that can be acquired and as well as retained with the other services. What they have done is that their approach was taken was they can provide all the financial uh, services they need for the small businesses, but they need to look ahead for the beyond banking perspective. When we talk about the beyond banking is like beyond any non-financial services they can caters to or partner with someone to provide to the small business so they will be more connected and will be working working in the same platform as possible. And so what they have done, that they introduced some incorporation services or accounting services, tax services that will integrate very well with the financial, financial instruments that they provide. And for that reason, they grown their, uh, their cl uh, clientele from almost 50% increase there within a year or so due to this. 
Wow. I mean, a 50% client base increase is, is massive, right? I mean, that's, that's a game changing shift in the amount of business that's coming through your doors. Uh, so no, I appreciate you sharing that example, Nazar. I mean, a lot to unpack here with this issue. And again, you know, I go back to my, my comment at the top. This is one of those weird challenges that organizations don't even necessarily realize that they're facing because their, their status quo might be success in the first place. But Hey, if your competitor is able to break that status quo and as uh, you know, I'll use Denise's term leapfrog you, well, boy, that can create its own set of problems for you and your organization. So really good stuff here today, guys. So one final time, Denise, I'll, I'll throw it over to you for anybody out there that is interested in reaching out and talking to you guys, open up and opening up a dialogue about their organization and how they might be able to leapfrog somebody else in their market. Uh, what would be the best way they can get in touch with you? Well, Ryan, thanks. I think the key here today is that you can disrupt your market by providing true impact. And you do that by shifting the focus of your organization to be like obsessed with the outcomes your products and services deliver. And, and getting your processes and how you deliver aligned to that is what we do best. So to, to figure out how we can help you, just click the link below, get some time on our schedule or reach out via LinkedIn. And let's start by having a conversation. Fantastic, guys. Well, look, I appreciate you both and your your time. I know you're busy. You've got clients to serve, so we'll let you get back to doing that. But uh, looking forward to you know maybe being back on another one with you down the road and addressing some more challenges that you know organizations are are working through, and you guys are helping to, to address them. So thank you both, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for having us, uh, Ryan. Thanks so much, Ryan. Alrighty, fantastic gang. And hey, look, I want to take one final moment and say thank you to our audience for jumping aboard and being with us on the show today. If you did take anything away from the day's discussion, you benefited from it in any way, shape, or form, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button then on the platform that you checked us out on today. That way you never miss out on another great episode where Denise and Nazar unpack these big challenges that are facing so many organizations, facing their customers and their employees, everybody involved in that picture, uh, and addressing how OKRs can certainly be leveraged to cut right through that challenge. But for Nazar and Denise, I'm Ryan. We're going to go ahead and say so long. We appreciate you stopping by and being with us on the OKR Cohort video and podcast series.